Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Now I want to cover here possibly the best time intelligence function or one of the first time intelligence functions that you should introduce yourself to as soon as possible uh, when learning Power BI, mainly because of its versatility and its ability to analyze and compare different time frames so easily once you understand how to actually use it okay so i'm just going to build up in this particular case a really simple table of information to begin with okay so i've got here and remember time intelligence is a subset of functions within the dax formula language that you can utilize uh, to run very time specific analysis okay and so I'm going to show you how you can do a lot of that analysis very quickly with just this one function, okay? So here I've just got a really simple calculation of my total sales. But honestly, as I, as I say a lot, like this could be anything. It could be any core measure. It could be, you know, and this concept of core measures is important in my view because you, you, you want to create your core measures really uh, quickly at the beginning of your model development so things like sales or quantity or costs or um or um transactions just you know just general core calcs and then from there you can do all this fancy analysis off the back of it okay so here i'm going to calculate just my total sales i'm just calculating up one column easy stuff okay then from here i'm going to um I want to analyze, well, I want to analyze my sales the previous year, okay? So you'll see here that it looks like there wasn't any sales in the previous year um, for this particular um, amount. So the, the previous year sales start, yeah, okay, so the previous year previous year sales started only on the uh, 1st of the 6th, 2014, right? And so this is the very first number or amount that is coming through in the sales last year. Now, why do we do this? Well, because it's easy for us to compare one period versus another time period. Okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper into the formula itself, okay? Now, you have to, with any time intelligence, really have a solid understanding of how the calculate function works. And remember what calculate does, it changes the context of a calculation. Because you see here, total sales is actually, I've embedded the measure inside of calculate here, right? And so it's running total sales, but I'm changing the context of the calculation with calculate. And I can change the context here. I can change the filtered um, period with the date add function, okay? Now within date add, I can add, I can play, I place the, the date column. So that's why a date table is so important. And I can then change, if we, if, we go, if we go in here, you'll see that I can change to say minus one. I can do anything though. I can do minus two, minus whatever. And then here is where the versatility comes in. I can, I can actually change the time frame by day, month, quarter, and year. Okay, in this particular case, I'm just going to do year. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, what's it? And I get this question a lot. What's the difference between the date add function and the same period last year function? Because that's a function by itself. If you're just analyzing this one year difference, there is, there is, there is no difference, right? But the thing with date add is this: is that you can go across month, quarter, day. So you have all of this versatility. So that's why I believe date add is just the better way to do it because it's just super easy and you know same period last year only does one calculation whilst date add can do any number of calculations over any number of time frames okay then i just add it to my model and then i can you know and i want to just show you a few uh, a little bit of versatility here um, of some other ways that i've set it up so you see here i've got sales last quarter okay so sales last quarter and look, all I've done, if we come and have a look at the formula, is it's exactly the same. All I've done is I've changed from a year to quarter here. And then I've got sales last quarter. So if we have a look at this one, 253, 166, this should, this should be, this number here should be on the 1st of the 3rd, 2015. So if we go 1st of the 3rd, 2015, 253, 166. Okay. And so again, now we can compare quarter on quarter numbers based on, um, this date add function now I can also do say this one here like let's just have a look at these ones. these are the ones I've created as well sales two 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 quarters ago so if we have a look at this particular formula all I've done is I've changed them to minus two there and I've used quarters and then if we have a look at three quarters ago I can then um, 
all I need to do is adjust the parameter here to minus three, and I'm using exactly the same formula pattern. Okay. And that's why this is so, um, you know, this particular function itself is so helpful because of just how easy it is. Like literally, all you have to do is, you know, if you want to do different time frames, is go, go in here, go copy, and then paste it in, and then and then you and then you're done. And then you can create visualizations that look exactly like, that look like this, right? So I'm just going to copy um, copy this particular table, and this might be quite a busy. Um, table so we've got last quarter so we do sales total sales sales last quarter two quarters ago three quarters ago right so if I wanted to I could um, create a visualization that looks like this this is obviously super busy so maybe what we want to do is we want to reduce the time frame a little bit more so I can come in here maybe I don't want to do one quarter right so I'm just playing around with my my filters here just so I can make a visualization that is actually meaningful maybe I want to do one quarter okay still still this is a little bit busy still way too busy colors are too similar so you know we might want to take out some information here um, so on and so forth this by the way this particular visualization looks much better when you turn it into a cumulative total so that those are you know th they would be some videos to review on the cumulative totals if you wanted to really see how this is playing out over 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 trends right but one thing that you can also do here that and why using data is is a great way to you um, great way to build into a calculation to branch out into a calculation this measure branching concept really key concept to understand right so if I take out these I can do a simple measure branch into my difference in sales because I've now got the sales last quarter right so this is actually last quarter so I can I might drag this in and take out sales last year here and then what I can do is I can come in here and go total sales minus sales last quarter okay and then now I've got the difference in sales all the way along right so the total sales of this particular date is 39,932 less than the quarter before okay and then I could turn this particular this you know when you when you when you start bringing all these in together you can start seeing the immense scale in which to get to calculations like this right and in the ways in the way that they can actually be dynamic also so we can create you know a visualization like that i mean maybe a visualization like this is, makes a little bit more sense but this is sort of the day on day difference per quarter from quarter three to quarter two and i was so easily able to get to that metric and then if say if i change to quarter two i again it just changes super quick for me you know with all of the ways that i the way that i've structured the formulas with date add right so i've started with my core formula and then i've just branched out to a, um, a different time frame that to compare to and I've just done that with data. And this is, I mean, this is not hard, right? This is seriously not difficult, okay? And then the other thing I wanna show you is this. Now, um, and this is where the analyst hub comes in, right? So I am going to show you how I can just, within the analyst hub, create um, obviously better um, formula setup, right? So I'm in the analyst hub, Enterprise DNA's analyst hub here, right? I'm just gonna paste my formula into here. I'm first of all gonna format it. So I'm formatting it. I can copy this code. I'm going to copy it back into my model. Okay, so I've got some nice formatting. But now what I want to do is I want to come back here. I want to save this formula. And I want to go um, date. I'm going to call it date add because I have a sort of, I'm going to um, build up my my catalog of all of my formulas, right? Um, last year. Um, date add last year. Okay, and then I'm going to go this calculates um, last year results using the date add function okay and then in this particular case I'm going to share it as a community doc as well so everyone else on the analyst hub can um, can utilize it but now this is this is going to be saved if I come to my documents you'll see now that I can reference this going forward so if I am going to create another calculation in here um, and it, so, so I'm just sort of building up my model from scratch. I can come in here and maybe I want to do a uh, calculation two years ago, right? I can go date add last year or, you know, I could have a more generic name there if I wanted to, honestly. I could come in here, I can copy my code and then I'm going to create a new measure. I'm going to say 
sales two years ago and then um, actually no, I, all I need to do is go copy and then I can go two years ago and then all I need to do here is a simple adjustment you know I didn't even have to type anything out and that is the the huge benefit of using the analyst hub right and you know the fact that this is just one formula we can jump in here and you'll see that is now part of uh, the community documents as well so so you know when you jump into the analyst hub um, you can you can access that now as well and so that's gonna you know I just know for a fact that going forward that's just gonna speed up development like you wouldn't believe right okay that's all I wanted to share today good luck with um, you know using, using this function as I say it's the most important and easiest to use time intelligence function so so really add it to your repertoire um, your 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 DAX measure um, your DAX measures knowledge and understanding um, as soon as possible so that you can you know start doing some some really great time related um, analysis okay all the best hey everyone thanks for tuning in to enterprise DNA TV if you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial please throw the video a like it really helps us and we really appreciate it also don't forget to subscribe to the enterprise dna tv channel uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use power bi and the power platform lastly check out enterprise dna's website plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily all the best. Take care.